Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are going to be shooting and driving this gorgeous 2022 Cadillac Escalade Premium Edition. This specific model is painted in this awesome metallic white color, which is called Crystal White Tri Coat, a $1,200 option from Cadillac. Also features the black grill, black accents all over the car, and sits on 22 inch chrome black alloy wheels. The tires are Bridgestone Alenzas 275 55s up front and in the rear. And this car is awesome, honestly, in terms of the stance and how it looks. Give you the side profile over here. So we swing around to the rear. Something pretty interesting about the rear here is that this car features this 600 number, which actually denotes to the amount of torque this car has in Newton meters rather than foot pound feet of torque. So if we do the conversion, it's, it's roughly 468 pounds uh, of torque. You can see the headlights just popped on there, the taillights rather. I'll swing around to this side profile. This car has roughly 420 horsepower, uh, which it makes from its V8 L87 engine, 6.2 liters. For a car this big and a stance like this, it's pretty impending when you look at it. All right, let's jump into the interior, take a look at that. This car seats seven. To actually open the door, you're gonna to wanna to place your hand over this. And there's actually a little button, a rubber button that you pull and the door opens. Sometimes that does happen where the door doesn't necessarily open. This car is fitted with the brandy interior. Very luxurious. We'll look at the rear seating here. You can see that gorgeous white tri-coat in the sun. This has the captain's chair with the optional three seats in the back. Gorgeous brandy. Cadillac has really upgraded their interiors and the driver experience. Hold on, we'll jump in and actually start driving it. All right, let's go ahead and hop in here and fire her up. Awesome, awesome. Just the seat here. Okay. Driving the 2022 Cadillac Escalade ESV. Right now we're gonna start off in tour mode. And while we do that, I think it's a great time to talk about the video rear view mirror, which you can actually activate by pulling this lever behind the rear view on. So within this view, you can actually customize uh, the brightness levels as well as the zoom. You can zoom in or you can zoom out. Uh, you can also change the actual angle up or down of the rear view, which is pretty sweet, honestly, in my opinion. Um, the latency is a little low and the resolution's not great, but overall it is the type of uh, ingenuity and innovation that Cadillac is putting out in their cars, especially within this luxury segment. Now with this Escalade, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put it through a variety of driving tests to show you what the capabilities are, how it handles in uh, tight corners or fast turns, um, and also take you uh, a zero to 60 uh, as well as uh, do some super cruise at the end of this video. In terms of the infotainment system, you have here a 16.9 inch OLED uh, display here, which is brand new for the fifth gen Cadillacs. Uh, much more intuitive than the previous gens. If you remember previous iterations of the Cadillac, 
It was that clunky button system with the single square split display. It was honestly pretty horrible to use and the buttons you could just never really figure out how to use. Uh, and they were so tedious and annoying. This is much better. And they've actually figured out a way to um, make the system compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Audio and Andrew uh, Android Auto, uh, and really overall make this system much more usable. Um, speaker system's decent. We got a AKG 18 speaker setup here. Um, it sounds okay. You know, it's not the best. I know there's another option for a 36 speaker setup. Uh, the bass is punchy with it within this one. The mid tones, high tones, you know, not that great. But when you buy a car like this uh, and you're paying as much money a, as you are, this car is about 115,000 um, as tested. MSRP is around 103. You know, you really do expect the best, and you expect uh, the type of quality you would get. You know, really out of um, let's just say like an AMG uh, or something similar. And this car just doesn't really have that in terms of the speaker capability. I will say overall, this car does have um, a great heads up display and a great new dashboard system here. Let's go ahead and try to make this light. Test the high speed steering. A little bit of body roll in this car, as you can expect, it's massive. Weighs almost two tons, or over two tons, and it handles those turns well. You know, it's the type of uh, type of ride quality um, that you expect out of a premium SUV. Um, the brakes solid as well. You know, I feel in control. I feel like I have a lot of stopping power, uh, especially for a car of this weight. And I'd say the ride control, so the ride quality. Uh, it does have this magnetic air ride. Uh, it it rides well, you know, it, for as big as the car is for a body on frame SUV. It has a high quality, um, high quality ride. And if you're in the back seat or if you're in, you know, the third row, you will feel more bumps. But as a driver and as the passenger, it's a really high quality ride. Um, and you're way high up as well, right? You, you're, you have this great view, this awesome, you know, sort of pilot-like uh, view out of the front windshield, and you have the height that matches, you know, perhaps a truck. And what's so interesting about this car is like, sometimes you pull up next to trucks, you know, big lifted trucks, and you're almost as high as them, or even you're higher than them in some situations. So this car really is that large, and you have so much headroom above you uh, when you're driving it. So tall, you know, tall drivers, they'll feel that comfort. They'll they'll have that ability to kind of see everything in front of them, um, which is something that you know Cadillac has done a great job with the Escalade. Now, right now we're in touring mode, but we can flip it into sport mode. The buttons down here to the left. We'll go ahead and sport it, go into sport. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, really, only a few modes. There's sport, or there's tour, there's sport. There's a, a tow capability mode, as well as an off-road mode, and then my mode. The my mode is only really customizable with two um, two different uh, features, which is uh, the engine and steering. That's about it. Um, and essentially, you can customize it with those two parameters. Although it really isn't a my mode. You, there's really no point in, in going into that mode um, because you can just go back and forth between tour and sport. In sport, the ride's a little bit stiffer. Um, handling's a little better. You know, you have uh, more aggressive shifts. Um, it's gonna stay in those lower gears uh, more frequently. But overall, I mean, I would say like when you're in sport mode, um, you have a, a, lar like a, a louder engine sound, uh, a bit more exhaust, um, and you can hear more out of that 6.2 liter L87 V8. Let's go ahead and take this corner, a little bit of speed. Yeah, a little body roll, but overall, you know, it handles well for its size. This is the extended wheelbase, so, you know, as you can imagine, now the car has paddle shifters, but they don't really do much. <laughs> um, they're really for this L mode, which is kind of a, 
you know, a higher torque, low RPM mode. Gonna take this corner here, a little bit of speed. Yeah, a little bit of body roll. Of course, a little bit of oversteer. You're gonna get that in any vehicle like this. Let's hit it. Yeah, I mean, she goes. You hit that gas, she, she's definitely gonna get going. Um, any type of V8 like this, it's a typical acceleration. Just test the brakes and the cornering. You always really do feel in control. Even though this SUV is this large, this heavy, you always have that uh, sense of comfort, sense of control. We'll go ahead and do a, a quick zero to 60 test uh, in one second. Also would like to do a turn radius test. This turn radius in this car is pretty good uh, for its size. Now, I think this is a good opportunity to show you guys the heads-up display, um, as well as the augmented reality camera. Now, the AR camera, it's an interesting feature in the car. So, I just turned it on, and as you can see, it's basically a front-facing camera. Although, I don't really understand the point of it, because it's not exactly AR. The only AR aspect to it is you have the miles, you know, your speedometer up here in the top. And you have how many RPMs the engine is at, other parameters like your current uh, range, fuel range, as well as fuel tank capacity. So you have those aspects to it, but it really is just that. You know, you can't, I don't think you can overlay directions on it. You can't seem to, uh, when you activate Super Cruise, it doesn't really do much. Um, so, th so it's not necessarily a feature that I understand uh, for, for why they added it. Um, And overall, it's just a little confusing um, sometimes. It actually can be a distraction. Let's see this thing go. Yeah, it's a pretty darn good pickup there. We're gonna hop on the highway in a second here. A um, couple other features that are interesting. It does have the uh, lane keep assistance, which vibrates uh, the seat, vibrates your butt when you're perhaps getting out of the wrong lane or getting out of your lane. Um, so you can enable that feature and anytime it, fe it senses that you're drifting, uh, it'll give you a little vibrate in the seat. Obviously tough to show on video, um, but it is a feature that is nice to have. Um, especially from a safety perspective. Sometimes you don't know when you're drifting out of your own lane. Um, another cool feature on the steering wheel here. So there is what's called, uh, let's see, conversation assistant, I believe. I think that's yes. Not that. That's the voice assistant. We're all familiar with it. Um, this button conversation enhancement so what that does is is basically a speakerphone to anyone who's in the back seat cancel please okay do a long press of okay so basically what that is it enhances the volume of the driver's voice or I think anyone who's in the driver or passenger side uh, seats and it replays that voice in real time through the speakers to those that are in the back seat. So it's called conversation enhancement. And basically it's designed so that you don't have to speak up. You can actually hear the driver, you hear the passenger, um, 
with more volume or more detail if you're sitting in uh, uh, sitting in the back seat. It's an interesting feature. I've heard um, from those that have sat in the back that have heard this that you know it, it's a little odd, um, and it, it sounds <laughs> it sounds like um, it, it's almost as if the driver is speaking inside their head or something uh, inside their head talking. Um, but interesting little feature from Cadillac. While we're at it here at the stop sign, I do want to show you the, the map, which is interactive. Uh, pretty cool interactive map um, that you, of course, can configure and drop in directions. Anytime you're gonna, anytime you're gonna add any type of directions, um, you can actually uh, overlay them in the heads-up display. And they'll also appear here. Let's go back to the gauge. We're gonna jump on the highway here in a second. Show you guys some Super Cruise. Now, the thing with Super Cruise, from what I understand, is Super Cruise has a, a different strategy from some of the other um, self-driving car manufacturers. For example, like Tesla. Tesla uses uh, strictly cameras and actual cameras and uh, you know algorithms to actually identify you know self-driving uh or, or to propel the car to, to actually conduct the self-driving cadillac by way of cruise which is their self-driving company that they acquired they use a combination of actually mapping technology of taking a look at the actual specific roads mapping them for safety and for you know dimensions essentially 3d mapping those roads and then they overlay that uh, with their mapping systems, and then they combine it with the technology, basically the LIDAR within these cars, um, to propel the car safely. Uh, so you'll see that in a second. Now, the big caveat for you, if you have Super Cruise, is that it will only work if the road has been mapped accordingly by Cruise, by Super Cruise. So, what I've learned just in uh, you know in demoing this car is that a lot of roads are not mapped, and um, from my understanding, you know mostly the highways are. Any type of residential road is not necessarily going to be mapped, and it's going to be something that uh, will not exist within their database, but will probably soon come. Um, other kind of reports within the industry about Super Cruise is that it tends to be much safer. Uh, due to its due to their approach, their strategy in delivering a self-driving experience. All right, we're gonna jump on the highway here in a second. Show you a quick little demo of Super Cruise. And in my opinion, you know, I think it's pretty safe. I think it's um, very easy to use. It will change lanes for you. It uh, will speed up. It will slow down. Um, it will it will be very conservative in how it makes its decisions to drive the car, uh, and will always you know tell you when you need to take over, and it'll be. Uh, be very conservative in how it approaches you know making any types of decisions but it's really nice when you just sit on the highway you're cruising down the road you turn that on and the car is driving itself and it's it's doing so in a comfortable and safe manner um, which typically you know you don't you don't have in these self you, you don't have that sense of safety uh, in a lot of self-driving cars these days MPG on this car, roughly about 15 to 16, depending on how you drive it and where you drive it. On the highway, you'll get about 19, you know, 14 around the city combined, 16-ish. 
Um, you know, it's a big V8. It's, it's you're not really going to buy this car and, and get great fuel economy no matter how you drive it. Uh, but then again, you know, how could you transport seven passengers uh, as luxuriously, as safely, as conveniently um, as in one of these? Now, one th interesting thing about Super Cruise is that it's actually not available on most entry and exit ramps. So the car will not get on the highway in Super Cruise mode by itself. You actually have to wait until you're cruising on the highway uh, and it has that map section laid out for it to enable Super Cruise. So I'm gonna hit that button right now and I'll show you Super Cruise unavailable, no road information, right? So as soon as we start cruising a little bit more and it recognizes where it is, let's see if it'll turn on, there we go, just turn it on. Cruise braking on. Let's see if we can speed up here. I'm actually gonna do a lane change for you guys. Okay, so auto lane change enabled, changing lanes. There you go, I'm gonna find the lane, it's gonna sit there. Now once you enable Super Cruise, this nice, beautiful green LED will pop up on the steering wheel. But yeah, there you go, we are cruising with Super Cruise on. You know, so far so good. Uh, it is monitoring, of course, the speed in front of you, behind you. break here. I'm not sure why I did that. I was about to change lanes and it didn't. I canceled. Didn't feel comfortable doing that. We're about to actually get off on this exit coming up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change lanes. So it's going to do another auto change. It's going to move over. If you like this video, please comment and subscribe. Love to know your thoughts on this car, what you thought of the POV, uh, and as always, Shifty Stand Out. Hope to hear you, hear from you soon. Comment below what your thoughts are on this car. Do you like the driving experience? Um, and if there's any way you know you, I can make the experience better for you, let me know. Final thought, if you have a car that you want me to POV drive, there's a form below that you can submit, which will then let me know that you are interested in, in having uh, a POV driving experience of your car shared with everyone in my channel.